फिर YouTube पे ठीक है विषय साइलेंट कर दो Good evening, everyone. So, welcome to the Plasma Scholars Colloquium in 2002, and we are here to have a inauguration program today. So, before we start, let's share a few information regarding our organization and this workshop and this webinar. So, before we started. and uh, this webinar series from today onwards we we conducted one uh, workshop spanning for two months in which about 500 plus students from all across the country and abroad they registered and we introduced them to the basics of plasma physics and groomed them in such a way that they have carried out some project work considering the different web modes the instabilities the space and astrophysical plasmas so that was quite a successful story behind and uh, in the coming days we will be all sharing special lectures by different speakers we have the uh, professor saini we have professor dinesh datani from the university of bodu uh professor bashudev ghosh from jadavpur university we have dr suraj sinha from university of pondicherry we have sukhdeep kaur from guru nanak dev university we have puneet kumar from the university of lucknow and uh, our this and, and dr sijo sebastian whose lecture will be telecasted today and there are some student speakers who will be presenting their oral presentations as you all know that uh, there is also a poster session so the details are given in the link below and uh, the, all the details regarding the upcoming program will be updated in the website so today we our program is something like we will be having a uh, after the inaugural program we will be having the procedure sebastian he will be sharing today's talk on and his topic is just let me be and his title of the talk is today nonlinear waves in multi ion plasma and we will be also having our oral presentations by our students shuman pramani will deliver his talk on electron acoustic solitary waves in forming plasma with two temperature electrons and we have two young undergraduate students devi prashad dost and mitika ghosh from the behala college and uh, she will then they will be delivering a oral presentation on the dispersion characteristics and shock forms of electron acoustic wave in semi classical plasma so before we get into the details let's uh, have a brief uh, outline of what we already had in the workshop in the workshop in the workshop we had uh, students ranging from different uh, institutions for instance many of the i almost all of the iits IISC, TIFR, Reva University, and Narendra Pur Ramakrishna Mission, Delhi University, Central University of Allahabad, Bangalore University. We have Divyagor University, Gohati University, Guru Nanak Dev University, and going from JNU, BHU, to some institutes. Uh, from abroad that is uh, university of michigan 
and the Cardiff University of Australia. And all this list is given in the website and of our webinar, uh, of our webinar series and workshop as well. So this is a blog uh, plasma hyphen webinar 2020.blogspot.com. I think this has been shared with you. And uh, before we start our talk today, I would like to give a general talk for the uh, listeners who are very new to Plasma. So you see, Plasma physics is that branch of physics which deals with the study of ionized gases. It is one of the four states of matter and was initially described by Langmuir in the early 1920s. Plasma is naturally occurring as well as it's made artificially. We have these tube lights, we have these fluorescent lamps, all these have having a plasma. The sun is a huge ball of plasma and the nuclear fusion reactors, all these things are different states of different types of categories of plasma. Now about 99% of the universe is composed of plasmas. So the galaxies and nebulae are composed of matter which are in the plasma state. Now the artificial plasma is obtained in the laboratory through heating of the gas or with the application of high fields and through the interactions with lasers. Now once the plasma is formed, it becomes electrically conductive. Plasma properties are distinct from other states like collective phenomena and quasi neutrality. Now these two terms, collective phenomena and quasi neutrality, are the basic criteria of a plasma. And our students and, and those who have carried out the workshop, they have learned about it. And what is the quasi neutrality criteria and the collective phenomena? Basically, plasma behaves as a collective field. The it is there are short range electric fields, but long range it is electrically neutral. Based on the temperature and density, plasma can be classified into classical and quantum plasma. A uh, number of, okay, a number of uh, parameters define the classical and the quantum plasma. So we'll come to this later. And a, various, and a variety of wave phenomena has been observed. The waves originate, the waves originate from the fluctuations in plasma that add up into a regular shape and propagate within the medium. Due to the fact that the universe is uh, that the universe is made up of plasma, its properties and behavior are of immense interest to scientists of almost all the disciplines. Interestingly, for the goal of practical fusion energy, all matter must be in the plasma state. The scientists and researchers of India and abroad, they have used magnetic field to confine it and heat it to temperatures even hotter than the core of the sun. We know that the temperature out there is some 10 to the power bigger quantities. Other applications of plasma is for making computer chips, the cleaning the environment. We have our uh, plasma gasification technology. It is in, uh, it is developed in India by uh, FCIPT, uh, Ahmedabad. And we have some other uh, industrial players as well. It's used in rocket propulsion, the destroying the biological hazard waste, the medical waste and other, and have got other applications as well. Now coming to the astrophysical plasma, then astrophysical plasma is plasma that is generally considered to exist outside the solar system. Some researchers consider it as a part of astrophysics and is commonly observed in outer space. Now there are a group of people who distinguish astrophysical plasma with that of space plasma, but uh, going into the intricate details, we just confine ourselves with the basic idea. So though we observe plasma in the Earth's magnetosphere, an ionosphere in the form of aurora, aurora australis, aurora borealis. The majority of it stays beyond our solar system, and our solar system is a meager fraction of the total plasma universe. 
The accepted view as put by the scientific community is that much of the baryonic matter, we know what is baryons? We have studied in general particle physics that is baryons and leptons. These are the basic uh, hadrons and leptons. These are the classified uh, uh, elementary particles. And we have those subdivisions, mesons and baryons. Now, some people are of the view that the total baryonic matter in the universe exists in the plasma state. When matter becomes sufficiently hot and energetic, it gets ionized and forms a plasma. Such a process breaks matter into its constituent parties, particles, which include electrons and ions. Now, these electrically charged particles are highly susceptible to influences by local electromagnetic perturbations. Such interactions result into strong fields generated by stars as well as weak fields, which exist in regions of star formation in intergalactic space. Likewise, uh, we can say that electric fields are observed in some stellar astrophysical phenomena. We have our observatory data, we have our space mission data and everything, but they are inconsequential in very low density gaseous forms. Astrophysical plasma is somehow differentiated from space plasma. As I've said before, that some people want to differentiate these two. You know, quite large the differentiation comes. Now, which typically refers to the solar and the ionospheric and magnetospheric plasma. This is the astrophysical plasma and the Earth and similar planets. This has been one of the guiding reasons why we want to investigate the nonlinear wave phenomena in space plasma and other uh, magnetospheric plasma. Before we get into the details, we should like to brief on some of the common topics because once we uh, start our lecture, different speakers come with their talks and our students present their work, what they have done. So I'd like to give some of the ideas. Now, observing the studying the astrophysical plasma, observing and studying the astrophysical plasma is of uh, prime importance because that's the experimental kind of part, uh, part of plasma physics, as plasma astrophysics. So plasmas are composed of charged particles. Therefore, in stars and uh, stellar environments, plasma which are produced interact with magnetic field in the vicinity, resulting in a variety of astrophysical phenomena. These phenomena are sometimes studied with uh, a very well-known Zeeman spectra. On the other hand, some forms of astrophysical plasma is influenced by the pre-existing weak magnetic fields, which may only be determined directly by polarimetry or any other indirect methods. Different, different methods are there. Those are the different ways of observation. Now, in particular, the diffuse plasmas exist in solar winds, interplanetary medium, the interstellar medium, the intergalactic medium, and everywhere there is plasma in space. Other methods of investigations are through the study of emitted electromagnetic radiation across a wide range of EM spectrum. As astrophysical plasmas are generally very hot, electrons in the plasma are constantly emitting X-rays, which are the so-called the process is the so-called Bremsstrahlung process. We all know it in our basic uh, X-ray uh, radioactivity chapter. These radiations are detected with the help of extra telescopes located in the upper atmosphere or in the space. There are, there are different telescopes at different positions on the Earth's surface as well as on space. So astrophysical plasmas also need radio waves. And we have one of our participants you know, who will be sharing something on uh, radio astronomy. And there are also gamma rays which are studied in different ways because we have a series of uh, astrophysical plasma phenomena which can be observed with different mechanisms and we have to interpret all those things and we can predict what will be the coming future. Now the possible related phenomena corresponding to astrophysical plasma astrophysics is that the scientific community is interested in the study of active galactic nuclei due to the fact that such astrophysical plasmas could be directly related to the laboratory produced plasmas. Most of the plasmas exhibit a series of complex magnetohydrodynamic behavior. 
So that part of the mathematics it is related is the MHD formulation. And such as this kind of complex have hydromagnetic MHD behaviors, such as instabilities, turbulence, and all these things. Despite the fact that this phenomena may occur at astronomically astronomical scales as large as the galactic core, many suggest that they may have not uh, significantly involved plasma effects. Some people are of the view, I'm not saying that we are sure about it, but some people say that they have no, they have insignificant uh, plasma effects, rather caused by the matter which are consumed by supermassive black holes. So as per the Big Bang theory, the entire universe was at the plasma state, this bowl of hot gaseous soup. And uh, prior to the recombination when matter formed. Afterwards, much of the universe deionized after the first quasars were formed. As per the general definition of a, of a quasar, what is a quasar? It is an extremely luminous active galactic nucleus in which a supermassive black hole with mass ranging from six to nine orders of the solar mass, six to nine orders, tens of orders of the solar mass, and is surrounded by an accretion disk. So what is an accretion disk? We have already um, learned about it in astrophysics that uh, around some galaxies, there are a flat disk-like kind of thing in which matter or the sphere or the gaseous matter, stellar masses are distributed. And this accretion disk exists in Saturn as well as a planetary, but, but they are, those are not in the plasma state, rather they are uh, dust particles. And we can also consider the dust, uh, the core dust mode, that is a dust acoustic mode and unacoustic mode in those cases. So studying astrophysical plasma is part of the mainstream astrophysics. Though it is often suggested that plasma processes, excuse me, So it is often suggested that plasma processes are part of the standard cosmological model. Current theories indicate that they might have only a minor role to play in the forming of gigantic structures like uh, such as galaxy clusters and superclusters. Plasma astrophysics is often studied by the fluid picture. Quantum hydrodynamics model, that is QHD model that we often use, and the magnetohydrodynamic model, MHD model, uh, formulations, rather I would say, are the two common models in these days of the fluid model. Out of the fluid model, these two are commonly used. During the middle and the last century that uh, Hans Alvin, the Nobel laureate Hans Alvin, developed the MHD, which enabled plasma to be modeled as a wave in a fluid. So general fluid equations can be used. I think uh, someone just suggested. Excuse me. So I mean, I think I'm clear with this audible. So according to Hans Alvin, the magnetor hydrodynamic uh, equations, which uh, gradually developed, has been uh, extensively used and is quite uh, efficient in explaining many of the plasma phenomena observed. One of the most important factors in defining a plasma are the plasma parameters. What are the plasma parameters? Now it defines various characteristics of a plasma, an ensemble of electrically conductive charged particles that respond collectively to electromagnetic forces. This is what we have studied so far regarding plasma, and I'll just say it about. Now, the plasma parameters differentiate different categories of plasma. So the one thing is that the temperature, the density, and the confinement time. So this the product of these three is what determines the stability of the plasma and it is very much important in case of a fusion plasma. Okay, so this is known as the Lawson criteria. Lawson criteria. So 
coming to the plasma parameters, it defines the various characteristics of plasma. So the astrophysical plasma has generally a neutral gas-like gas cloud from uh, around the stellar bodies, but may also include dust grains and particles, grains. Now this dust particles are very, are some microscopic particles and um, the physics of the plasma universe by Perrot Anthony, is, the picture is quite clearly given. The behavior of particle systems can be studied statistically as well. So this Parks book is there and uh, it clearly differentiates or classifies the different uh, statistical distributions for space plasma. Therefore, the plasma we will be considering in this uh, future studies or what we have done in our, our workshop necessitates a discussion on the various statistical distributions applicable to plasma. But uh, I do like to keep that part as different authors would be stressing on them and the speakers would be also. So there I'll just name a few would be the Massel Boltzmann, the thermal distribution, the non-thermal distribution, superthermal distribution, the Kappa distributions, the Keynes distribution, these are all the distributions. Q non-extensive distributions. So these are the different distributions we used in we use in plasma. Therefore, the plasma we'll be considering will I would say that uh, in those papers they are mostly Fermi plasma, that is very dense plasmas, and we'll be using the quantum precious for them, that is uh, uh, that by given by Chandrasekhar, that is relativistic degenerate matter corresponding to and the electron degeneracy. So we'll discuss about that in our later talks. So, but before that, let's go for the distribution functions in plasma. So we'll just keep on the as I've said, I would not like to bore you on all those things. Now coming to the plasma models, as magneto at times, assume that the particles to exist in thermodynamic equilibrium. Now, the, regarding the applicability of different uh, particle distributions, we assume that it is in thermal equilibrium, where the distribution function is mass or Boltzmann, mb type. Such a distribution function follows a uh, flowing fluid concept of the possibility of different temperatures existing in the direction parallel or perpendicular to the local magnetic field. In terms of, I am talking about the magnetic matter dynamic picture. More complex distribution functions are maybe there since plasma and cylinder, we don't have a thermal equilibrium of them. So that's a very crude approximation. So non thermal or non equilibrium cases are to be cared, they're taken care of. Uh, distribution function is mathematically analogous to a measure whose time evolution in phase space. We know from the physics point of view that the phase space um, is a momentum and the coordinate. And uh, it is studied. And I'm sorry, I apologize for the word because we are going a bit technical. I just refrain myself. So a phase space is that kind of plot in which the particles information is available. Now, to make it more general, now come to the waves in plasma. What are the waves in plasma? Because we see whenever there is a fluid of particles flowing, what we find is that certain gradual fluctuations, and these fluctuations may be high frequency fluctuations or low frequency fluctuations. So the low frequency fluctuations are often known as the acoustic mode. We have the ion acoustic mode, we have the electron acoustic mode, we have the dust acoustic mode, we have the first uh, first fast modes like the plasma mode or the landing waves. Now, what are these acoustic modes? Now, to be frank, it is not related with the sound wave we often deal with acoustics. But in plasma physics, there are small frequency oscillations. Oscillations, these oscillations are uh, maybe uh, ex executed by uh, electrons when there are two species of electrons, hot and cold, where the hot and hot electrons, they provide the restoring force and the cold electrons, they provide the inertia and they start oscillating. So this is the electron acoustic. 
Now, when we have the ion acoustic mode or the dust acoustic mode, this here the ions or the dust particles they are moving in a low frequency oscillations. So what are dust particles? Then you see dust particles are just grains of particles. Microscopic in their diameter or size, over which the electrons get stuck and they make it a charged dust particle. So the dust particle behaves as a charged particle, and what we find is that um, they respond to local and uh, electrical fluctuations and they interact with the plasma particles, like the electrons and ions. And these dust acoustic modes are obtained. Now, there are if in a two pla system plasma, this is dust and ion. We have got the dust ion acoustic mode. We'll come to those in our later lectures and different speakers. Our students, they will present, and our um, guest speakers, they will clarify. And um, the coupling. <laughs> Well, we are facing, uh, we are getting some questions, interesting questions. Mm. So, a plasma is quasi-neutral, electrically conductive fluid composed of electrons and multi-species as well as neutral particles. We are just getting a general term of plasma. The coupling of plasma particles with the, uh, with the field, electric and magnetic, even the gravitational field in gases, in case of a gravitating plasma, in case of gravitating plasma, you see where there we consider the uh, gravitation forces or gravitation fields as well. And it is due to the electrical conductivity, such a plasma, uh, such a complex array of particles and fields support a variety of wavelengths. A variety means, as I've said, these all these modes are there. And if you go to the literature, you will find there are electromagnetic and as well as electrostatic modes, out of which there are um, polarized modes, there are uh, couple modes, upper hybrid, lower hybrid modes. These are different things, and we'll be including it in our later lectures. In a plasma, the electromagnetic fields are two parts one is the equilibrium part, this is the static part, and the one is the alternating or the oscillating part or the perturbations. According to whether there is an oscillation, oscillating magnetic field or waves in plasma can be categorized into electromagnetic and electromagnetic, as I said. Now, while we are dealing with the electromagnetic things, we have the Maxwell's laws. So the max, what is the magnetohydronomic basically? It takes into the Navier-Stokes equation, coupled with the Maxwell's equation, and you get the magnetohydronomic equations. Okay, so magnetic hydrodynamic um, uh, equation, set of equation is quite interesting in the sense we just uh, we just get the magnetic behavior of the, you know, basically what happens whenever we are considering of a plasma, suppose in an astrophysical plasma, we have the planetary magnetic field or the magnetosphere. So the particles in the magnetosphere, the plasma particles, they interact with the magnetic field. Similarly, every, every star and every planet have got their individual magnetic field. So if they have got the individual magnetic field and the plasmas in their surrounding behaves in such a way that they interact with the, I would say that says that they interact with the magnetic field. So a better modeling of the uh, system is to the magnetic model. So this is uh, long, this may be longitudinal or perpendicular. Now, additionally, the part, participating particle, which starts oscillations, uh, may have a criteria of classification depending upon the temperature. So we just keep those things and regarding we keep those detailed things for a later part of the lecture, not the introduction. So these are the basic things. Now let's come to the uh, webinar part. And I think I have just uh, introduced the basic uh, plasma physics or plasma astrophysics to our listeners. And we have got some question. And 
Well, well. Well, someone asked that is plasma present in human body? You see, plasma, we are talking about the plasma is that the blood plasma. We often uh, get uh, swayed by this kind of uh, plasma because many people consider that plasma is always related with biology. And uh, that is the blood plasma or body plasma. But here it is an, a collection of uh, electrically charged particles. And we have some more question. Now let's see. Any more question? Okay. Please don't confuse plasma. Ah, okay, Anish. Thank you. You answered on my behalf. So, um, just to give an idea of what we'll be doing here. Now, I'll be just presenting. Okay. Before we invite our uh, speaker. Okay, so I think uh, yes. You see, we have our guest speakers. Let me give you. I think uh, it's, is it visible? Okay. So um, just zoom in. Okay, thank you. So today we'll be having our guest speaker, Dr. C. Joe Sebastian from St. Patmos College, Chandranaseri, Kerala. And uh, he is uh, quite involved with uh, nonlinear waves in multi ion plasma. And he has carried out a number of works in cometary plasma. So from 7 to 8, we'll be having his talk. And uh, thereafter, we'll be having some of our student speakers. Tomorrow, from eight to nine, we will have Dr. Sudesh Kumar Sinha from Pondicherry University, and he is an experimental experimental plasma physicist, and he will be uh, presenting on plasma metal junction, the PM junction. is a very recent field of research, and has got a promising future. And Dr. Puneet Kumar from the University of Lucknow on fifth. Uh, from 7 to 8, he will deliver his talk on quantum plasmas and the different modes. On 6, uh, six that is Sunday, we have Professor Basudev Bhosh from Jadapur University, Department of Physics. And the title of his talk is Nonlinear Wave Propagation in Bounded Plasma. So he will give you a flavor of the bounded plasma, and it is from 6 to 7. And on 6, also, we have another talk by Dr. Vaidyasar Prasad from Reserve Plasma Division, Arakat Indoor. And the title of his talk is Optical Probing of Laser Produced Plasma. So, here we give you, try to give you a flavor of laser produced plasmas and how the measurements of optical probing things are done. And on 7th and 8th, we have our beloved uh, professor, senior professor, Professor Dimitri Batani from the University of Bordeaux, France. And he will be delivering two talks for, our, for us all. And on 7th, the title of the talk is Fusion in the Universe and in the Laboratory from 7 to 9 p.m. So we would like to have this session as an interactive session. And all the sessions are de desired to be interactive in which the participants would be better if they are um, if they present if they try to uh, put up their question in Facebook, uh, in YouTube chat box so that it would be easier for us to uh, correspond to. And the next day, that is eighth of September, Professor Batani would again deliver a talk on the advances in inertial confinement fusion. So this inertial confinement fusion is. Uh, what we look for in the fusion technology. So on 9th, we have Dr. Arvind Mukherjee from the Center of Excellence in Space Science in Aizar, Kolkata. So the title of his talk is Breaking of Nonlinear Waves in Plasmas, the Kinetic and the Magnetic Heart Autonomy Now the Kinetic, what is, I just, I just forgot to 
tell you because while we will be just uh, we just presented the previous section we just dealt with the fluid model there is also one of the model the particle model or the kinetic model so that would cover the kinetic model on the same day uh, dr amar prashad mishra from the mathematics department of vishwa bharati university shantiniketan he will deliver a talk on and it, from 8 to 9 pm and the title of his talk is electromagnetic solitons and the stability in degenerate plasmas so on 10th we have two guest speakers professor naresh pal singh saini and uh, from the guru nanak dev university the title of his talk is theoretical study of nonlinear structures in space dusty plasma so you also get a dusty plasma uh, topic in you, in our series of uh, talks and we have dr sukhdeep kaur uh, who will be delivering a talk on terahertz from the guru nanak dev university on the same day 10 on the propagation characteristics of laser beam of different intensity profile in plasma and the simulation of terahertz waves in parallel phase wave drives so we have dr uh, sukhdeep kaur and professor saini on 10 and this uh, you can get this in our website okay now coming to the oral presenters by a student the list is not yet updated totally but we are on the process of updating but we will just give a few couple of days presentation you see today suman pramanik from iit kharagpur he will be delivering his talk on electron acoustic solitary waves in fermi plasma with two electron two temperature electrons from 8:15 is a 10 minute talk and a 5 minute discussion after that we have mrithika ghosh and devi prasad dotto from behala college university of calcutta and the title of the talk is dispersion characteristics and shock forms of electron acoustic wave in semi classical plasmas is from 8:30 and uh, these are the student presentations today and after that we'll close our session for tonight and on 4th that is tomorrow we are having the student speakers shorodip thakur from the university of delhi and the title of his talk is analytical study on uh, of the dust and acoustic waves in an uh, ultra relativistic plasma and it is on 6 pm there are to we have riya bishwas she will be delivering she is from vivekananda college university of calcutta a uh, study of electrostatic solitary structures in a semi classical plasma 615 on other side she would talk on uh, Study of electrostatic shock fronts and solitary profiles from ultra relativistic plasma in the critical regime is from 6:30. And tomorrow also we have a couple of uh, other speakers. We have Ahuna Mojumdar and Riti Prashant. There is a joint presentation from Saint Xavier's College, Kolkata. The uh, title of the talk is "Study of Shock Fronts and Solitary Profiles in a Weak Relativistic Plasma Along with Its Evolution into a Rock Wave" from 6:45. And finally, we have. Nikhil Prasad Sina from uh, Dr. C. V. Raman University, Bilaspur, and he will present on the investigation of anagostic and electrostatic shock front and solitary profiles in a Fermi plasma from today. And slowly we'll update the list and uh, gradually. Now coming to the poster presentation, we see and um, that we have a new kind of thing. You see, we have our poster presentations. We can just view or download here view or download here and uh, okay and that's how of oh, just oh. hold on i uh, just just two minutes Where you can just uh, put your like, and we have a trending: two thousand two hundred fifteen, one eighty two, one twenty five, ninety nine, one thirty one, one ninety four, one ninety five, and we are just counting, and it's good. And uh, based on the likes and uh, the expert view from the 
panel of judges who will be choosing the best poster presentation as well as the best oral presentation. <coughs> So this is how you can just the rules of principle uh, and the, you see the uh, last date for submission you of your poster is fifth or I'll just max at sixth. So after that we'll just close this and follow the rules and uh, for the poster presentations. And here it is given where to where you want to submit and all these things. Now before we are there, let me check whether. Our guests are there. Sijo Sebastian, he has arrived. We have our speakers over here. So I would just like to take Sijo Sebastian. Sijo, are you there? Uh, Hello. 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 Audible? Yeah, yeah, audible, yeah, audible. Thank you, Sijo. But uh, Sijo, could you yeah. just uh, turn on your camera? We'd just like to introduce you before you, uh, before you start your talk. All the, all the speakers today, please turn on your camera. Sijo, your video is not uh, Yes, Yes. Devi Prashad, Mrithika, please turn on your camera just for introduction. Okay. So we have our friend. Hello. I think some network issues. Hello. Yeah. See Joe. Hello. Okay. Uh, I'll, just be, I'll be just back with you. And Suman, could you just uh, turn on your uh, microphone? Suman? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Suman is, uh, just introduce yourself, Suman. Uh, hello, I'm Suman Pramanik. Uh, I have- Could you just raise your voice? Uh, yeah, is it, uh, it audible? Yeah, it is audible, it is audible. Uh, so I'm Shuman Pramanik. I, I have done uh, my master's degree in physics from Department of Physics, IIT Kharagpur. And uh, I have done this work uh, in this summer, uh, what I will be present today. Yeah, so, let's see. We'll, we'll listen to you. And Mrithika and Devi Prashad, could you turn on your microphone? So my uh, microphone is on, but my our video is not working. Oops, so okay. we are having no this still one. I am Mrithika Ghosh, uh, the final year student of Behala College, University of Calcutta. I did this summer project under uh, Swarnif Chandra, sir, and I will present myself. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. And... Uh, there is Devi Prashad. Hello, hello. Yes, yes Devi Prashad, just introduce yourself. Yes, I, I am Devi Prashad Dotto and I'm from Behala College, Calcutta University also. And I'm going to uh, present our work on electron acoustic waves. To... So you'll be presenting together with Mithika, I hope. Yes, we, we are presenting together. Okay. Thank you. And we have our uh, beloved student, Vishal Raj. He is also one of the coordinators between he and Vishal. We thank you once again because he is all behind the website designing and uh, all this hosting and poster updation. He is very much expert on this. And thank you once again. Now I would like to go back to Sijo. Sijo. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Turn on. Hello. Hello. I think you have yes. your uh, audio is turned off. Yeah. 
your audio is turned off just uh, yeah yeah i want to share my slide yes you just start sharing please okay. uh, and yes yes thank you and i'm just uh muting my Yeah, you're audible. Hello? Is it audible? I think I am not able to share yes, my slide. Yes, it is audible. Slide. Audible, audible. You are audible. I will share my slide. Okay, thank you. You just oh, turn on your. You just turn on your microphone. Your microphone is turned off. On the left hand side, you will find your microphone. So, yes, see you. You share to my slides. No, it is not. You just start share screen. Go to share screen at the bottom. Yeah. Go to share screen. Yes. Hello. Yes. So you just could you uh, call me a minute in the phone? I'll just yeah. yeah. I'll just hold on.
So you can you share right now? Yeah, just a minute. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, uh, I think Sijo, you may turn off the video. Okay. I think regarding the. Okay, but uh, your slides are not been shown. Just I think it is the slides are not there. Yeah, it is showing here. Just you just start screen share. Share screen. Is it okay? Yeah, I'm sharing screen now. No, but your screen is already with your camera. Just a minute. Yeah, we are there already. No issue. Okay, Sijo, can you just send me the uh, PPT such that I can share it for you and you can just deliver your talk? Yeah. You send it to. I'll send. Yeah. Yes. I think your uh, I think your you are already sharing your screen is been shared WhatsApp screen is shared. Okay. Oh, I think your WhatsApp screen is shared. Yeah, it's been shared, but I think your WhatsApp screen. You just turn off your WhatsApp. And open with your uh, PowerPoint slide first. 
yes, yes. It's through mobile, I think. Whatever now? Yes, now it is visible. Now it is visible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, Sijo. You just started. Thank you. Okay, so pray for the trouble. No, thank you. So in this lecture, we will look at nonlinear waves in multi plasma. Actually, we mainly focus on solitary waves in this lecture. Apart from solitary waves, there are other kind of nonlinear waves are present in many space environments and even astrophysical plasmas are there, experimental plasmas are there. So in many regime, many nonlinear waves are there. So you may aware of that these shock waves, double layer, rock waves. Of course, solitary waves is popular, so you already may know what are the solitary waves. So here we are discussing nonlinear waves. Actually, what is meant by nonlinearity? Of course, a linear wave is small, and uh, most of the systems are linearly unstable. We actually take only on the values of only in the regime, uh, linear regime values only we take. So when the amplitude of a wave is becomes large, linear theory is no longer valid. And the number of nonlinear phenomena may modify the plasma. You may know that what is the condition for linear wave? You may know that it obey superposition principle. What is meant by a superposition principle? Suppose we have a function f of ax plus by. So if we can write or if we are able to write the function as a f of x plus b f of y, then that kind of function is called linear function. And of course, the coefficients do not vary with the time. So these kind of these linear wave modes got linear perturbation methods. So nonlinearity plays a big role in the formation of nonlinear wave. Of course, other kind of things are there. We will discuss later in the lecture. So for nonlinear waves, we have to derive or we have to, or the system have to satisfy these kind of nonlinear equations. There are many Nonlinear equations are there in plasma. One popular one is KDB equation, Kordbeck Drebys equation. Of course, that is a one dimensional equation. If you want to derive three dimensional equation, we will go ZK equation, Sakara Gutsarno equation. That is only for solitary waves. If you want to incorporate other kind of waves like shock waves, double layer, we will go for KDBB equation or KP equation. So first we will discuss nonlinear waves, a double layer. What is meant by a double layer? A double layer is simply two adjacent layer equal, but they are oppositely charged localized space localized in space which create an electric field much greater than the fields present in the plasma so these double layers found in many environments such as magnetosphere ionosphere of earth solar atmosphere and jupiter's magnet magnetosphere also Double layers are found in experimental plasma also. One important property of double layer is thickness. Actually, 
the thickness should be of the order of few d by leg. So the thickness of the double layer is a few centimeter in ionosphere and in few meters in uh, intergalactic medium and a few tens of kilometers in other kind of environments, especially in space environments. But actually in experimental plasma, of course it is of the order of few millimeter or few centimeters. There are other kind of, or double layer can be classified into a variety of ways. One is weak and strong double layer. From the previous slide, you already seen what is meant by double layer. It is a two region separated by opposite charges. So it may extend tens of kilometers in space region. So depending upon the strength, we can classify weak and strong double layers. Usually strength is expressed That kind of double layer is called a weak double, uh, sorry, strong double layer. Of course, thermal energy is related to rest to mass energy of electrons. So we are comparing potential drop in the layer and uh, comparing with the rest to mass energy of electron. So if these things are comparable, that kind of double layer is called strong. Otherwise, otherwise it is called a weak double layer. Of course, other kind of double layers are there. One is relativistic or non-relativistic double layers. If a double layer is called relativistic, that means it or the potential drop within the layer is comparable to approximately 512 kilo on electrovolt energy of the electron. Other kind of double layers are there, current carrying double layer, current free double layers are there. I'm not going to discuss more double layers. What happens when charged particle enter in the double layer? So depending upon the potential direction, the double layer or the ions or electron may accelerate decelerate or reflected by the electric field present in the plasma. So actually when electrons and ions are trapped in the double layer, depending upon the electric field, anything may happen. That means it may get accelerated, decelerated or reflected in some direction. That is depends only on the electric fields. So you can see a variety of instance in the universe where double layers are exist. So this is an active research field. Only um, the double layer has only 50 year history in research. So you can explore double layer in detail. Another kind of nonlinear waves is solitary waves. You already know that what is meant by a solitary waves. When the nonlinearity of the medium and dispersion of are in, in a balanced state, a solitary wave is where formed. Actually, solitary waves are found in 1834 in Scotland by Russell Scott, who is a naval architect. He discovered solitary waves. So it is found way back in 1834. For that only, he only demonstrated how this wave of translation and form. There was no proper theory behind this. 
So after 30 years, that means in 1876, Lord Kelvin tried to give an explanation for this. But in 1985, Kordnev and Debreis give a satisfactory theory, theory behind uh, the formation of solitary waves, which is exactly the balance between nonlinearity and dispersion. Actually, nonlinearity try to steepen the wave and the dispersion try to spread the wave. So these are in equilibrium or when they are in balanced state, a stable structure called solitons are formed in the media. So that is the spectacular stability is the main feature of the solitary wave. So after that, in plasmas, after 1950, there was a lot of study carried out for the solitary waves. Some are experimental and some are theoretical. So first experimental observations of solitons were done in 1980 and later by the same scientist in 1973. So after 1990, there was a huge research on solitary waves in different plasma environments, especially uh, in dusty plasma environment, um, ion acoustic solitary waves are found later incorporating with the magnetic, magnetic field, uh, incorporating with the other kind of ions. There were a lot of research done for, for the solitary waves. One important thing of solitary waves is its spectacular stability. So the presence of dust, the presence of dust means that is another interesting topic. In different space environments like planetary rings, magnetospheres, cometary tails, and Earth's agnosphere, encourage research in disease plasma. What happens to the dust means plasma itself is a complex medium. By the addition of dust means it uh, gets modified and uh, we can incorporated with a lot of other kind of heavier ions also. So it gives a lot of complexity to the plasma. So using solitary wave or using solitary wave theory, we can study its stability factor also. Next is rock wave. Rock wave usually found in shallow water So this is usually large, unexpected, and suddenly appearing surface waves. From this slide, you can see a rock wave suddenly appears in the middle of the graph. You can see on the left pan. Before that, you don't have any evidence of what is coming or what is going to happen in the next couple of or fraction of second. So I hope you can see the y axis. So that is surface elevation in meter. So normal wave patterns or wave amplitude occurs only below seven or eight meter. So suddenly a huge wave, approximately more than 18 meter, suddenly hit. So that kind of wave is called rogue waves. You can see the right pan, what happens to the ships in the sea during that time. It can happen at any time without any trace. That's a specularity or speciality of the wave. 
So we don't know exactly how or why these kind of waves suddenly appears in a fluid media. This is of course happened in the shallow water waves. So rock waves are sometimes we call the killer waves or breather waves. Another kind of nonlinear wave is called a shock wave. I'm not going to give details on the shock wave. Of course, a shock wave is formed when the nonlinearity and the dissipation are in the plasma medium. So our interest is we consider a multi ion plasma consisting of some kind of electrons called kappa described electrons along with lighter and lighter ions and both the polarity charged heavy ions. So we are considering multi ion plasma. Why we go for multi ion plasma research? Of course, I already told you that basically a plasma consists of electrons and ions. If we add more ions or heavier ions, plasma become more complex. So variety of wave modes are present in the plasma due to the addition of these kind of multi ion environment. So one important multi ion wave mode is ion acoustic wave. So these ion acoustic waves are found in 1974. Nonlinear theory of ion acoustic wave first propounded by Sagdeev in 1966. First experimental verification of these kind of ion acoustic waves are studied in 1970. So due to the addition of or due to the presence of many multi ion environment variety of wave modes are originated or exist. Another kind of ion acoustic wave is called dust ion acoustic wave. Of course the addition of dust in the plasma or a dusty plasma Usually dust is a millimeter to nanometer size particle present in the present in different space environments. So due to the addition of dust, due to the heavier mass of the dust, it supports variety of wave modes. I already told you that why multi ion plasma is an interesting topic. Our topic of interest is cometary plasma. We are going to apply our theory in a comet. So apart from solar wind, protons and electrons, comet contain lot of water molecules. So dissociation of these water molecules like positively charged hydrogen and oxygen ions and associated photoelectrons gives more complexity to the plasma. In addition, different waves are found in many comets. In 1986, Balsiger et al. found different ions at the coma of Comet Halley. Other kind of ions, which is greater than 12 AMU, is found by IC spacecraft at Comet Giacobbi Sinner. And also, you may notice that the ionization of oxygen may or can up to O8 plus by Chandra X-ray telescope recently at Comet Magnon Harley. So these kind of ions 
give more complexity to the plasma so actually when a comet solar wind interaction results different kinds of different types of wave modes due to different phenomena of course apart from these heavier ions positive and negative ions are present in the plasma you may notice the mass spectrum or mass peaks ranges from 7 to 19 22 to 65 and 85 to 110 amu is experimentally or observed in the plasma environment by spacecraft geoto similar to above mentioned ion pair there is a possibility that positively and negatively charged heavier ions can coexist in cometary plasma that's a speciality of plasma cometary plasma and also these potential could be of opposite polarity confirmed by choi et al in 1993 so in a plasma environment positively and negatively charged ions are present or coexist of same species in our cometary environment plasma you may not not that electrons are produced by sol sun apart from the sun you may notice that other kind of electrons are present in the cometary environment that is called cold electrons because compared to hot these cold electrons are of course are in few in number and temperature is low these cold electrons are produced by the photo ionization so this was experimentally or by observation confirmed by the swickel et al in 1986 and also the faradwaj in 2003 noticed the existence of these kind of two electrons may present in cometary environment of course cometary activity begins when sun approaches the comet so solar wind contains lot of electrons that may be deviate from the mb distribution maxwell maxwell boltzmann distribution so many space environments the species deviate from maxwellian distribution due to high energy so we are modeling our plasma with a non equilibrium plasma that is called the kappa distribution function we are taken into account this is confirmed by vasilinas in 1968 he proposed a proposed a detailed addition to the 1990 found the waves at comet khali from the observations of geoto spacecraft
basis of copy in 2012 Wolski and Isagaro found a number of solitary structures in the tail of comet Halley so these are the motivation behind this work so actually we are going to apply our theory into a comet and uh, we can study how these nonlinear waves depends on different physical constituents of the plasma that's we are going to discuss we are we here discuss uh, we discuss fluid equations of course almost 80 percent of the plasma phenomena were successfully explained using fluid equations so we are going to going to take in the fluid approach you may know that the continuity equation for the plasma is given by equation one of course the moment equation is given by the equation two here the n represent the number density of the ions present in the plasma u is the fluid velocity z is the charge number Q is the polarity, whether it is positive or negative. M represents the rest mass of the ions. <coughs> P represents the pressure of the ions in the plasma. I already told you that the electron distributions are taken or there are two kinds of electrons are there solar electrons and cometary electron electrons the the distribution for electrons are using kappa distribution the poisson equations are given in the equation 4 to derive a nonlinear equation we have to adapt some technique here we are adapting Reductive perturbation technique. You may already know that the perturbation theory in your master's class. So we are going to elaborate the number density NJ. Similarly, the fluid velocities along different directions using the equations 5 to 7. The potential of the equation, potential can be elaborated using the equation 8. And we are going to substitute these five to these equations in 1 to 4. And finally, we may arrive at equation called ZK equation shown as in equation 9. The first term of the equation 9 is time emission equation. The second term denotes the nonlinear equation. The third term that means the rest of the equation represent the dispersion equation dispersion, where the coefficients A is called nonlinear coefficient, B and C is called dispersion coefficient. So a solitary wave structure or solitons are formed when there is a delicate balance between the nonlinearity and dispersion of the medium. These A, B, and C are normalized with uh, the equilibrium value A0. That is not given. Um, the A, B, and C are not symbol as given. That may be complex. That contains a lot of things. That is not included in the slide. That may be even bigger than this slide. That is a problem.
times a is given a two. Of course, I already told you that there is a pressure time. So different pressure times are given as P one P, P two P, P three P. P one perpendicular, P two perpendicular, P three perpendicular are given in the slide. One important property of the plasma that means in terms of pressure. its temperature value is different for parallel perpendicular directions that's why perpendicular and parallel values are here for the solution of zk equation this is completely integrable solution integrable system so we can arrive the solution of zk equation given as psi m hyperbolic sig function square eta by w where eta is the space coordinate psi m is the amplitude of the wave that inversely depends on the nonlinear term a dispersion and to see from this slide actually we have derived is a k equation non linear equation in cometary environment we have derived non linear equation in a cometary applicable to cometary environment that plasma contains or that plasma has different components especially multi ion that it contains two kind of electrons one is of solar origin another we nsr here plus hr there hydrogen is there so it's a complex thing so we are going to discuss how these physical parameters deviate for we have taken different uh, physical parameters like density temperatures from comet halley that is observed in 19 87 and the uh, values for negatively and positively charged oxygen is taken from the observation of chc et al in 1991 you may notice that the number density of hydrogen that is taken 4.5 and 5 centimeter raised to my actually while deriving we get three solitary waves that means the zk equation supports three wave modes three kind of solitary waves that differ in phase velocity so we plotted for different phase velocities different parameters we plotted for different phase velocities i already told you that amplitude of the solitary wave is huge compared to ordinary wave it is thrice so large amplitude means that wave travels faster in the system so we are going to plot the amplitude of the solitary wave with the different pressure values for negatively charged heavy ions for different phase velocity i already told you that we drawn these figures for three sets of phase velocities so we get three kind of solitary waves from these you can see that 
different anisotropy value of pressures you can see that the second one is exponentially increasing that means as the pressure value increases the amplitude of the solitary wave increases that means as the pressure value increases that solitary wave travels faster through the medium the third one top the uh, third one is almost flat exponentially increasing but almost linearly increasing the first and the second one is exponentially increasing the bottom figure bottom three plots shows the width of the solitary waves for the same set of parallel pressures of negatively charged heavier ions for different phase velocities for different four three sets of phase velocities from this figure you can see that for first standard third it is the width of the solitary wave increases the second one is decreases you may notice that the width is linearly proportional to b and c the coefficient b and c represents dispersion terms so that means the first and the second sets of phase velocities it is increasing the wave with the width of the solitary wave increases but in the case of the second is that the amplitude of the solitary wave decreases as the anisotropy value of parallel pressures of heavier ions in increases this is of course the same thing for positively charged light ions for three different phase velocities the width is almost identically different width of the solitary wave increases for increase in anisotropy value of parallel pressures of positively charged light ions three phase velocities for amplitude you can see that the second one the middle one is exponentially increasing for first and the third phase velocities the amplitude of the solitary wave decreases that means if we increase the anisotropy value that means that kind of solitary wave travels slower compared to the second one we have to study how the amplitude and width of the solitary waves vary for depending upon different physical environments that is important parameter of a soliton so its speed and its stability all depends on amplitude and width of course that depends on a b and c these three terms non linearity b and c represent the dispersion of the medium that th that three terms significantly affect the speed and uh, width of the solitary waves ions for different velocities in this slide the same thing for positively charged light ions positively charged light ions we are taken as h plus in cometary environment or in solar um, environment there is a possibility possibility that h plus ions are up so we are drawn different anisotropy of parallel pressures of different values for these phase velocities for 
three sets of solitary waves. Here also, the width of the solitary waves is exponentially, not exponentially, it increases as the anisotropy of parallel pressures of positively charged light ions. But in the case of amplitude, you can see that the first and the third one is decreasing, the second one is increasing. That means, similar to the previous slide, you can see that only the second phase velocity value for second phase velocity value or second soliton it is increasing. That's kind of solitary wave travels faster as compared to standard third. This is for charge of ions for different velocities for amplitude and width. And I drop the value of parallel pressures of heavier charged ions. From the figure, you can see thus that it is the amplitude is exponentially decreasing for the first and the second set of phase velocities. The third one, it is increasing. In the case of width, all the three values are increasing. This is a plot of amplitude versus width of the solitary wave for different anisotropy value of perpendicular pressures of positively charged light ions for different phase velocities. Except one, you can see that it is almost identical. That means the anisotropy value of perpendicular pressures does not have any significance on amplitude and width except one. This is the plot of amplitude versus width against anisotropy of perpendicular pressures of heavier positive ions for different phase velocities. The amplitude is almost constant. Also, the width is exponentially, sorry, not exponentially, increases as the anisotropy of perpendicular pressures of heavier positive ions increases. In conclusion, actually what we have derived is that supports solitary wave. Of course, the pressure term is there. So we studied how the pressure term varies or how the anisotropy of pressures varies for amplitude and width. Here we have taken hydrogen ions, electrons of solar and cometary origin, positively and negatively charged heavier pair ions. The electrons are mold modeled by kappa distribution functions. For the, uh, for the anisotropy, we have incorporated CGL theory. And also, we have drawn the solitary waves values taken at Comet Halley that is observed value in 1987 and the values for the parameters of oxygen ions are taken from the JC et al observation value. From the plot we can see or it is seen that for lower values of phase velocity that means the left A supports the lower phase value. The width and amplitude of this solitary wave strongly depends on anisotropy parameters. If we increase the phase velocity, the width and amplitude does not have much significance on the 
properties of solitary wave that that means amplitude and width does not affect much for the large values of phase velocities on the other hand <clears throat> the width and the solitary waves are independent of anisotropy in picture we have derived the solitary waves we may occur to support that we have taken different observed values of comet halley of course different space environments contains energetic particles that particle or that kind of species we can described using kappa distribution function that's why we are taking kappa distribution function for the energetic values for electrons we also add multi ion environment or multi ion species into the plasma solar wind contains solar electrons and h plus and h minus ions of course the photo ionization causes the water molecules of the cometary environment into dissociate and we may found the oxygen ions and in addition to oxygen ions the h ions are also there so our plasma is a multi ion plasma contains lighter hydrogen ions and oxygen ions in addition to ions we incorporated two kinds of electrons using fluid approach and relative perturbation a linear equations or is it a that equation a is called non linear term b and c is called torsion term i already told you that a soliton is formed when there is a delicate balance between the non linearity and the dispersion of the medium while deriving the so solution it is supports the hyperbolic function hyper the cm represents the amplitude of the wave that is non linearity term the width of the solitary wave contains the dispersion term b and c so we have drawn different figures for different anisotropy value of different species for that we have taken the observed values of comet halley thank you hello Thank you, Sijo. Thank you, Sijo, for your wonderful talk. And uh, we have some questions here from the viewers. So uh, I just uh, start asking one by one. A couple of questions. So someone just uh, said, "Why do we exactly mean by anisotropy of parallel pressure?" anisotropy of parallel pressure right hello 
Yes, an isotropy of parallel pressure. That's the question they they have asked. What is uh, yeah in parallel pressure? Yeah, in plasma for parallel and perpendicular direction of magnetic field. Of mm. course, here present interplanetary magnetic field. The temperature may vary because in depending upon the direction one can travel in one direction in perpendicular the particles may travel in another direction so the temperature may vary that is evident from the cgl theory i in the conclusions like i have included the cgl theory i am not given the exact terminology i have used for one parallel pressure the temperature may vary of course perpendicular pressure is also vary but uh, for perpendicular pressure it is p per is equal to the ordinary value but for parallel pressure it is all cube the cgl theory if we go into look at the, the cgl theory you can see the value of parallel pressure is changed that's why i want to study how the different parallel pressure affects the nonlinearity or the solitary structure that's why i have incorporated the anisotropy value of parallel pressure hello yes yes thank you and let me see how uh, a couple of questions are coming up uh, just a moment Okay. Someone just asked regarding the one of the slides. Just uh, let me frame the question for you. Is that uh, hello? Yes. In uh, cometary oh. plasmas, so the speed of yes. the particles that uh, execute the simple harmonic motion or, or the uh, plasma waves so what are those speeds comparable to okay in cometary plasma hmm. can you repeat the question the speed of the particles uh, which form the plasma particles what is the range of uh, is it the thermal kind of speed kind of thing or is it higher or lower oh thermal it's a thermal because uh, Uh, the only due to the solar wind, mm. the plasma of the cometary environment. Hello. Yes. Is yes. It audible? Yes. 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 The activity of the comet, uh, activity of the comet, only begins when a solar wind is coming, right? Okay. So after the solar wind, only the actually the plasma property of the comet begins. Okay. so it's a mixture actually the dissociate the velocity and all so it's a mixture that is some uh, thermal speed and more than uh, yeah thermal just a thermal speed and of course these things are only very minute quantities the um, in solar wind actually the activity of the com uh, this one comet begins only at a distance of 1 au 1 astro astronomical unit distance so okay. it's a very only few but uh, the non linear waves are found in the cometary environment by different uh, space crafts okay the um, this one the fluid velocities and all are very nominal compared to other space environments okay recently this uh, new wise satellite was there a uh, new wise uh, comet was there so um, uh, can some data that uh, have been uh, obtained so is there any new wave phenomena that has been observed as well uh, i think it is over the already in 1986 at homet hali by different space craft by ic international cometary explorer we uh, studied the phenomena in cometary environment in very detail okay. i think uh, now they are not going to not studying the wave phenomena other kind of activities they are studying so and their observations are and all they are done okay and 
I would just like to uh, clarify certain things uh, regarding for the young listeners that uh, this regarding the shock waves, as you have said that uh, you won't uh, you just uh, say this, uh, it's common thing that I would like to ask that uh, the shock waves that has been observed in uh, cometary plasma tails and these places. So can they impact the satellites? And that is out there. Uh, uh, shock. <laughs> I have just included one slide, right? Yes. Could we just go to the slide? Yeah, we have to. Only one picture I have included. Yes, yes, but that was quite interesting for them. <laughs> Uh, interesting, but that is a common uh, picture, yes. uh, not related to com uh, this one plasma. Okay, okay. So I have mentioned only um, uh, shock wave is formed when nonlinearity and dispersion, dispersion okay. came into existence. So we, this shock wave we can observe in water wave, water. When yes. a boat is moving, hmm. you can see the sides. Yes sides of a boat in a river. Yes, we observe that. Yeah, um, that is a fluid pressure is the main thing. Exactly. Uh, for shock wave, uh, there are a lot of other interesting things like a sonic boom and all. That is of course uh, found in air. Yes, sonic boom is found in yeah, air. Yeah, one, uh, one if you study the shock wave hmm. in water and uh, air, that is easy when we apply these things into a plasma. And could you just clarify? So I am not. Achha, yeah, that means uh, we are uh, we are taking the fluid approach here, right? Mm -hmm. So air we can take as a fluid because mm -hmm. a lot of uh, uh, collective phenomena are there, like water. Hmm. So if we compare these things with the plasma, you can able to study a lot of things. Uh, okay. This is, I have taken the rock waves hmm. from the shallow water waves. Achha. Your water is a fluid, right? Yeah. So if we apply the fluid approach, hmm. compare these kind of waves in plasma. Rock waves are um, another me. interesting topic in plasma because not strong rock waves are found in plasma so far. Hmm. Not strong evidence of rock waves. Theoretically, there are a lot of predictions where all, uh, rock waves are present in plasma hmm. but experimentally very few. I think okay. um, not few, zero I think. Experimental confirmation of rock waves in plasma. Okay. This, so this is an interesting topic. topic. Interesting topic, but A lot of mathematics here, log waves, because um, uh, there are experimental observation of rock waves, experimental observation, because experimentally observe device, otherwise, we have to observe in base. Okay, deep space. But I think no experimental evidence of rock waves. There is possible. There are a lot of theoretical works of rock waves in plasma. Hmm. We can go to the. Well, that can be. Well, so far we don't have any more questions. So we thank. Uh, um, your network is failing, Sijo. Okay. Could you just uh, turn on your video, if possible, so that we can uh, thank your part?
Hello. Xin chào. Hello. Yeah, you are audible. You are audible. So we thank you on behalf. Hello. Because I had some issues with my slides because my laptop is crashed in the afternoon. So I suddenly prepared my presentation in a in the phone actually. Okay, okay. Still, so it is there are problems. I know that. Yes, we know every this so will. I couldn't include a lot of mathematical equations in the slide. Yes, but uh, it was quite an enriching because many of our students uh, they are working on shock waves, KDP Burgess equation, theoretical work. So. From your lecture, it was quite uh, evident oh, okay. for them, and many of them text me that uh, the lecture was quite helpful because they were doing the mathematics and going through the literature. Your job <coughs> just helped them so that they can work. So, thank yeah, you. You can share my email. Yes. So I can it, give a yeah, I will just put your email in the uh, chat box. And uh, yeah. and for anybody having any query regarding the commutative plasmas and space plasma, and because she is a very young and active participant, uh, a researcher, I would suggest some of you who are interested, you can directly contact him and share your results, your findings, and uh, we'll be happy once again if in our future webinars we get Sijo as one of our speakers. And thank you, Sijo, for being my friend. And uh, today we just uh, been able to start our webinar series. So thank you once again. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity given. Okay, okay, it's not an opportunity. It's my, uh, and my students, uh, uh, you know, our good luck that uh, we are having you because you are, I know as a person, you are a very young and active individual. And with uh, the, your group, I have also referred some of your works with uh, Srikala and uh, others, your research group, that uh, what you have done on commentary plasmas, because that's a very recent and interesting thing. And thank you once again. So let's just... Uh, take a five minutes break and then we'll be back with uh, um, Suman Pramanik with his talk. So I will just share Sujo's uh, email. And uh, uh, as for now, I can also share it. Um, just hold on a minute. Okay, so see Joe's email, I'm just sharing here. Yes, you can get Sijo with uh, his email, S-I-J-O, Sebastian, S-E-B-A-S-T-I-A-N, 108, at the rate gmail.com. I'll just put it in the uh, YouTube uh, live chat here if you want to contact him. And uh, thank you, Sijo, once again. I would just invite Suman Pramanik to turn on his uh, microphone and uh, prepare with your come on with your presentation. Thank you. Suman? Suman? Are you there? Yes, I am here. Come. 
Is it come live? Yeah, just a minute. Okay. Should I share my screen? Yes, yeah, just introduce yourself. Yeah, hello, I'm Shumon. Uh, I've done my MSc from IIT Kharagpur this year. Mm, let, let me share my screen. Should I share my screen? Yeah, just share. So sh shall I start? Yes, start, Shumon. Start. Hello, as I said, I am Shuman Pramanik. I have done my MSc uh, from IIT Kharagpur. Uh, today, I will be discussing about electron acoustic solitary waves in Fermi plasma with two temperature electron. I have done this work uh, on this summer uh, in the summer workshop on plasma physics. I would like to acknowledge uh, my co-authors and uh, for their great contribution towards this work. So without them, this work would be an impossible journey. I, I, would, like to, uh, I would like to acknowledge them and really uh, I would like to uh, share my gratitude and thanks to them. Onkita De from Lady Brebon College, uh, Shubhajit from Jadavpur University, and Mrigango from Jadavpur University. Well, uh, these are the contents of my talk. Uh, today, I'll be mostly discussing on uh, motivations to study plasma physics. Uh, and I'll be very less discussing on technical stuffs because already Sijo uh, has uh, uh, shared uh, so much technical stuffs with us and uh, next speakers also will be sharing. So I'll be mostly sharing uh, the motivations and uh, <clears throat> where we can find plasma, why we should study plasma, all those things. And then I'll be talking about uh, my work. So what is plasma? Well, now uh, in the current pandemic situation, uh, what we uh, are used to uh, heard about plasma is this, the blood plasma, because there is a, uh, there is a uh, medical therapy called plasma therapy for uh, any kind of virus treatment, viral treatment. And for coronavirus also, there is a kind of plasma therapy, which is basically if someone recovered with coronavirus, then uh, his or her blood is equipped to the antivirus and uh, he can, he or she can donate uh, his or her blood to a patient and then that patient body will develop that antivirus. So basically the blood fluid, that is the plasma. Uh, most of the people know, but today we are not very much interesting about this plasma. We'll be talking about plasma, which is the fourth state of matter. Now, we all know about uh, solid state, liquid state, gaseous state, but there is a fourth state of matter. Many of us may not know or may know. So that is plasma. Now, how can we form this fourth state of matter? Let's say we take a bowl of ice and just place the bowl in room temperature. What will happen? This ice will melt to water. So from solid to liquid, then if we heat that, it will vaporize liquid to gas. Now, if we continue to heating the system with producing some electric field uh, and heat may be reached uh, thousands of degrees Celsius, 
the electron will uh, go out from the atom and the atom will be ionized and the thing will, would be just a soup of ionized atoms and electrons. This soup of ionized atom and electrons is plasma, is the fourth state of matter. In a great scenario, uh, we are used to see solid, liquid, and gas, but not very used to see plasma around us. The main reason of this is we are a species of Earth, and Earth is not a very hot planet. Earth is a, a, a comparably cold planet, so we we often don't see plasma on Earth, but we can see solid, liquid, and gas. But if we see on some hot regions like, let's say, our sun, the everything there is plasma basically, not solid, not liquid, very few gaseous, but most of the thing is plasma. So our sun, any star, are the giant balls of plasmas. Even the particles coming out from the sun, this is called solar winds, they are plasma and they carry a magnetic field with them. When they interact with the Earth's magnetic field, they produce uh, light in the polar region of Earth. We, we call them auroras. So that is the evidence of plasma. And most common evidence is lightning. Lightning are really very uh, high temperature objects and they are in plasma state. Not only lightning, any kind of spark, any kind of electric spark is plasma. So these are the common example. Now let's talking about the beginning of our universe, how our universe came into the picture. The recent knowledge that we have is that Big Bang cosmology that called the Big Bang cosmology. That is basically, we believe, and there is experimental evidence also, that our universe begin from a kind of explosion, sudden explosion called Big Bang. There was some quantum fluctuations and then a sudden explosion generates our universe. And then that small point expand to a large universe that Sudden expansion of the universe is called inflation. Now, let's summarize. What, what was there? There was energy and quantum fluctuation. Quantum fluctuation generates our universe. That was a point universe. Our point universe had very energy in it and no mass, only energy. Now, there was a certain expansion, that expansion called uni uh, inflation. When that exp uh, expansion happened, then our universe certainly cooled down and now uh, energy will turn into matter. Energy can turn into matter, we know, E equal to mc square formula, Einstein's famous formula. So energy will turn into matter. Now, what was the state of that matter, that primordial matter? Was that in solid state? Was that in liquid state? Was that in gaseous state? No, the energy was so high that primordial matter was in plasma state only. And the very primordial matter that was in plasma state, that's why the uh, region is called dark age because everything was ionized for plasma and light can't pass through ionized plasma because uh, we know that only light emits when there is a electronic transition. And if every atom doesn't have electron, all electrons are fused, atoms are ionized, then there won't be any transition. So there won't be any light. So this plasma state of the universe is called the dark age. And then universe again cool down and those plasmas are just uh, atom get electron and they are just form uh, neutral matter, and then they form everything in the universe. Now we can see, starting from galaxy, star, um, and everything. 
so we are made of plasma we are we are made of plasma dust our star our planet our earth everything made of those primordial plasma dust so that is the big motivation to study plasma to know what is plasma so according to me this is not the fourth state of matter but but this this should be the first state of matter and everything is the next steps as i said uh, in our sky in the current uh, time in our sky uh, everything we can see is plasma starting from comet tail as sijo said uh, starting from comet tail to stars to planets neutron star white dwarf suman, suman just please take your microphone a bit close yeah is it uh, okay it is right now perfect okay you. okay okay so just a minute yeah is it is it okay now yeah you just take it yeah yeah is it okay yes okay okay, okay so starting from comet to star uh, neutron stars brown dwarf white dwarf nebula interstellar medium black hole accretion disk any exciting things that that we can see over us that we can see throughout the universe are basically plasma so we can safely say that 99.9% of the visible universe is plasma now uh, mind the uh, word visible i i am talking about the visible side of the universe not the dark side of the universe we know there is mysterious dark matter and dark energy i am not talking about that but the baryonic universe the baryonic matter the visible matter is basically plasma the 99.9% of that is plasma so this is a big motivation now uh sir william crookey on uh, 1879 first discovered plasma but he didn't know that uh, this is plasma so he named the thing as radiant matter later uh, american chemist irvin langmuir uh, worked with that radiant matter and he find that radiant matter uh, similar like blood plasma so he named that thing as plasma on 1928 that was the discovery and they saw that the new thing behaves very strange with electric and magnetic field first of all the thing is glowing and and uh, are really sensitive to magnetic and electric field so they are, they are, there must be charge and they get it correctly they discovered plasma well now let uh, talk about some technical stuffs let's say uh, if we want to study plasma if we want to uh, do physics with plasma then what we have to keep in mind is that plasma are basically ionized hot gas so they are gas basically so uh, gas means they are fluid so we need fluid dynamics to analyze them because we know uh, liquid gas all are fluid and fluid dynamics is necessary to uh, analyze analyze uh, plasma because they are basically gas but again they are ionized gas so there is some charge business going around so we need electromagnetic field we 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 need electromagnetic theory to uh, to analyze them so uh, yeah so with uh, fluid dynamics we also need maxwell's equation these these are the basic equation we need to analyze a plasma system so keep in mind we need two things fluid dynamics and maxwell's equation to analyze any kind of plasma system well so let's uh, talk about our work so what we did is that we did some uh, analysis with three component plasma three component plasma means that plasma system consists of 
two temperature electrons, hot and cold electrons, and ions. So ions are stationary, and uh, we need to develop now the fluid equation. So ion is stationary, so there is no continuity equation for ion, but hot and cold electron, we have continuity equation. And the second fluid equation is what? The momentum equation. So this is the momentum equation for hot electron. This is the momentum equation for cold electron. Now, we can clearly see that for hot electron, there is no inertia term because hot electron are hot, they have more kinetic energy. So they have more mobility. So the inertia is zero for them. But for cold electron, there is inertia term and they also feel some viscous force. The eta is the viscosity coefficient. So these four are the hydrodynamic equation or uh, the uh, yeah fluid equation for our three component plasma. Now come to the Maxwell's equation. We worked with unmagnetized plasma. So among the four Maxwell's equation, two equation dealing with magnetic field is not needed for us. We need other two equation. The equation which are uh, dealing with electric fields. Now magnetic field is zero. So these two equation will certainly reduce to single equation if we consider some kind of electric potential and the single equation is called Poisson's equation. For our case, the Poisson's equation is this in CGS system. So for cold electron density, there is hot electron density and there is ion density. So these five are the main governing equation, these four and this Poisson equation. These five are the uh, main governing equation we have to solve to do any kind of physics with our plasma. Now we need to specify the system. What is the system? There are different kinds of systems like quantum plasma system, classical plasma system, uh, relativistic plasma system. So we work with Fermi plasma system. What, what that mean? That mean the pressure of any species of the system will depend on the density of that species and the volume of that uh, species like this. So uh, J is the jth species. It can be hot electron, cold electron, or ion, and it will depend on the density like this. Well, let's do something with this. What we did is that we, we linearize the governing equations. And if we linearize them with taking into consideration uh, mm, uh, uh, harmonic oscillation for the field variables, we get a dispersion relation with the wave number and frequency. This dispersion relation is complex because a wave number itself is a complex and there is a complex iota there. So what we have to do is we have to take the real part and the real part will give us the real dispersion relation for the system. So uh, I just plotted them, the K versus omega plot. These plots are showing how wave number change with frequency or more elaborately, how momentum change with energy. So for different uh, plasma parameters, there are different kind of plots. We have various parameters, H, U0, eta C. Uh, when we develop, we, we get these parameters. Well, what we, uh, what we got from these plots is that basically the slope of the plot is inversely proportional to the velocity of electron acoustic wave. So if the slope is high, the velocity of the electron acoustic wave is low. Again, we did some nonlinear study. Uh, Nonlinear study means we perturb our system with some kind of perturbation. This is the smallness parameter. And we perturb like this. If we perturb the system and produce a stretching of variable, this is something um, uh, technical things. If we do that, we get cortic diffuse barger's equation, a differential equation. And what we can do with this differential equation, we, if we solve them, we get soliton structure. And what soliton structure is, uh, uh, there is lots of uh, thing to study with soliton structure. So these are the soliton structure. 
and also the previous speaker uh, told about uh, elaborately about soliton structure so i won't be telling much more about what is soliton but we get these soliton structures and again we did some extra work we did we take different kind of perturbation and did the same thing and again get other kind of soliton structures okay so what we can do with these things these nonlinear studies basically crucial for shock waves. Shock waves are irreversible uh, process. Like uh, le let's say, if there is a bomb blast, nuclear bomb blast, there is a shock wave propagates, and this shock wave is propagating through air. If a jet is moving with very high velocity, there is also shock wave, and this shock wave also in air. Now, if we want to study shock wave in plasma, then we need those equations, those cortex de Vries Barger's equation. And shock wave in plasma, where can it happen? In space, in uh, let's say in supernova explosion, in any kind of violent event in space, the interstellar medium is full of plasma. So the shock wave is in plasma when the shock wave is in space. So is there any practical application of plasma physics or just we do it for astrophysics yeah there is lot lots of practical applications starting from plasma cutter plasma laser plasma television in medical science there is plasma therapy and in advanced electronic the talk that you are now hearing uh, from your laptop or mobile are for this advanced electronics and with plasma we can uh, we can add we can uh, yeah advance it a lot more now, if you are a Marvel fan, and if you uh, saw Iron Man movie, there was an arc reactor. That arc reactor uh, was built by Tony Stark's father, and that arc reactor generates huge energy that can run the Stark industry. And uh, what Tony Stark did is that he basically uh, make a small arc reactor for him and put that small arc reactor on his chest and that thing generates huge energy that that make uh, him a superman superhero and he can blow humans he, he can blow his enemies he can blow cars uh, yeah he can blow cars and do uh, the the small arc reactor on his chest can produce this much energy well, that was science fiction movie. Uh, you might not believe in uh, this kind of science fiction thing. I, I also don't believe in this kind of science fiction thing. But the arc reactor concept is not wrong. Actually, the world is now thinking about building a real arc reactor, which will be producing huge energy to, to solve our energy crisis. The, the world is thinking about that. And this is a mega project called ITER, uh, where uh, many of the countries are involved, and India is one of the country. And when this ITER will be built, they, they basically they basically took some plasma and flow that plasma through this chamber, and that flowing plasma through the chamber will generate energy. So without plasma, without plasma analysis, this this can't be happen. And all our studies, all the studies going on on plasma can be helpful to build to build a realistic arc reactor so that is the most practical application these are the uh, future work plan i would like to do i would like to study chaos in three component plasma system i would like to study multilinear uh, layer properties i would like to study instabilities yeah so thank you you can mail me anytime your question or you can ask me now also Well, Shumon, uh, we have a lot of appreciation for your talk. And uh, yes, there is, a, as you say, oh, you are just having appreciation and appreciation. So someone asked that, could you just explain how scientists Langmuir uh, concluded that four state of matter uh, is the plasma is similar to blood plasma. The question was raised by Anindita Chattopadhyay. 
please please repeat the question uh, it was not clear ah, the question is uh, can you please explain how langmuir concluded that fourth state of matter that is plasma is similar to blood plasma who oh, he he didn't concluded anything he just he was a chemist so uh, he had some work uh, with blood plasma he he had previous work and then he learned about the radiant matter discovered by crocus and he started working with those radiant matter and and suddenly he just find similarities i mean similar in view he find that the radiant matter is looks very similar like blood plasma so he just named it there is no other reason Hello, Suman. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. There is one question by Suhin Devna. He asked that why you didn't consider relativistic effect in what systems? He had got two questions. The first question is why you didn't consider relativistic effects in what system we should consider the relativistic effect? It is the first question. And the next question is how viscous effects come into play? I mean, why you consider that? That's the question. Uh, so far, uh, let me address his first question. Why we don't uh, didn't consider the relativistic effect? Yes. Well, we can consider relativistic effect, but as I said, I worked with Fermi plasma. Mm -hmm. This is my choice. I worked with Fermi plasma, but someone can work with relativistic plasma also. Just the pressure law would be different. So I was interested in Fermi plasma, so I worked in this. And if someone worked on relativistic plasma, there would be some relativistic term and there is uh, papers on that. You, you can find it or you can mail me. I will suggest you some papers where you can read relativistic plasma. And uh, what was the second question? And how do you, does the viscosity effect? Okay, just a moment. Uh, yes. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Uh, how viscous effects come into play? I mean, why you consider it? Thank you. Okay. Uh, the viscous effect is basically a uh, second derivative of velocity. So we are considering some velocity for a uh, hot electron and cold electron because we are considering some continuity equation. So continuity equation when we are considering that means that there is some flow. So if there is some flow, there is velocity associated with that flow. And if there is flow, in a medium, then that medium can generate some friction to the flow. Medium always can generate some friction to the flow. Let's say uh, you try to throw a ball, the air will generate force to the ball. Otherwise, Newton, according to Newton's first law, the ball will go uh, uh, infinitely. So that, that won't happen. So whenever there is a flow, there is viscous force associated with that flow. Now for our system, we are just considering that for hot electron, there is no viscous force because we are considering hot electrons are very mobile, but for cold electron, we are considering viscous force. And viscous force is basically second derivative of the velocity. That's why this term is coming here. Okay. And another question before we conclude your session is another say, she asked, can you please tell why we are using fluid dynamics for plasma? And why are the similarities between plasma and the common fluid? Okay. Oh, the plasma is basically, basically plasma is, is fluid. So uh, why plasma is basically fluid? Because it can flow. Anything can flow is fluid, like water, like gas, like plasma. The difference is that it is just ionized. It is a soup of ionized atoms and electrons. So that soup can flow. So uh, anytime we consider a cross section, there may have flow uh, from the cross section. So we have to consider fluid dynamics. If we have to consider the flow, there is nothing static in plasma. So we have, so we have to consider fluid dynamics.
Okay. Thank you, Shumun. It was a wonderful talk, fascinating, with so much of um, uh, Iron Man suits <laughs> and arc reactors. I really felt it uh, very much. Thank you. Feeling. No, it's appealing, it's interesting, and uh, thank you once again. So, uh, I'll just invite now Mritika and Devi Prashad to come up with their talk. And uh, Mritika, please. Thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome. Just, just introduce yourself share. before you start presenting, okay? okay. I'm Mritika Ghosh from Behala College. And uh, we did this work in this summer workshop. And let's go into it. Let's dig into it. Good evening to all the respected dignitaries and my dear friends. I, Mrithika Ghosh, along with my friend, Devi Prashad Dotto, is going to give a presentation on dispersion characteristics and shock fronts of electron acoustic waves in semi-classical plasma. A special token of thanks to our group mates, Gorima Ghosh and Shomiksha Roy for their constant support and active participations. In this speech, we want to highlight on plasma physics and its application uh -huh. Electron Mithika, acoustic wave. Just, I just like to interfere. There is one icon at the top of your screen, slideshow. Just got that. Thank you. Uh, which one, sir? It's okay now. It's okay now. Okay. Fine. In this speech, we want to highlight on plasma physics and its application, electron acoustic wave, quantum hydrodynamic model normalization scheme, linear dispersion characteristics, shock profiles, cortevic deveries burgess equation and solitary structures, future scopes. So the first thing that comes to our mind, what is plasma? Plasma is the fourth state of matter after solid, liquid and gas. We know that from a very young age that we can go from solid to liquid, liquid to gas. But we never ask our teachers back then that can we heat a gas or what we will get when we heat a gas? Well, when gas is heated at a temperature of the order of 10,000 K, then the atoms in the gas gets ionized, producing ions and free electrons. Like the stars in the sky, like the waves of the sea, yes, the forgotten lines of our childhood song come to our mind when we look at the night sky, ornamented with twinkled stars, or we hear the sound of the rolling sea. Those stars are made of plasma. Those waves are found in plasma. Plasma is found in the interstellar medium, intergalactic medium, in the solar winds of sun, in the tail of the comets, in the gaseous nebula, in the black holes, accretion discs, in the northern and the southern lights and even in the lightning and in many more objects. Many of us imagine Earth's magnetic field as a circle, but actually it is like this. In the Northern and the Southern Hemisphere, there are crusts, which are basically the meet points of many curves. Here the magnetic fields go inside, as you can see in this video, and when suns high energy particles or the plasmas of the sun come and they go inside this crust to the ionosphere, what we actually get is the auroras, the aurora borealis in the northern hemisphere and aurora australis in the southern hemisphere. Our present work is on those plasmas, electron acoustic waves. Electron acoustic waves usually occurs in plasmas when two population of electron exist. One is the cold electrons and the other is the hot electrons. Now the suffix hot and cold are because of the respective thermal velocities. The typical hot electrons have thermal velocities much, much higher than that of the cold electrons. The inertial cold electrons provide inertial effects needed to maintain the EAW. 
while the non-inertial hot electrons provide the restoring force which comes from the pressure of the hot electrons. Next, quantum hydrodynamic model. As already Schumann told, that hydrodynamics is needed for plasmas because it is basically a fluid. And quantum hydrodynamic model is derived by taking velocity space moments of the Wigner equations. The QHD model generalized the classical fluid model for the plasma with the inclusion of quantum correction term known as bomb potential. The model incorporates quantum statistical effects known of through the equations of state. There are certain properties of plasmas, high temperature, high energy, physical dimensions of the system should be larger compared to the DBA length, number of electrons in the DBA sphere must be larger, the plasmas must be coupled strongly. There are four types of acoustic waves in plasmas. Acoustic waves in plasmas are not the basic acoustic things which we learned in our BSc level. Basically, there are four types, electron acoustic, ion acoustic, electrostatic, and dust acoustic. We dealt with electron acoustic waves. These are our um, general equations, governing equations. The first two are the continuity equation for hot and cold electrons. And the next two are the momentum equation for the same. And lastly, we have the Poisson's equations. Now, as you can see, in the hot electrons, we have the pressure terms, which is absent in the cold electrons. And we have the viscosity term in the cold electrons, which gives the inertial effect. The governing equations have lots of units and dimensions. Dealing with these units and dimensions is very lengthy. And we physicists try to avoid this. And what we do basically is we do the normalization. This process of normalization is basically to remove the dimensions of the variables. A particular normalization scheme is followed as given in this blue box. Here, we consider the pressure to be classical pressure. And uh, we uh, do the normalizations of the governing equations and we get these normalized equations. H is the bomb potential parameter, also called the quantum diffraction parameter. It is used to replace the complex bomb potential term already present in our um, previous slide in our governing equation, we replace this complex term to a simpler one with this uh, H parameter. Delta and delta 1 are basically the constant terms, the ratio of the number of cold electrons to that of the hot electrons and ratio of the ion charge multiplied by the number of ions to that of the hot electrons. Next, what we did is the linearization. Linearization in mathematics and also in physics is basically finding the linear approximation to a function at a given point. We do small variations with the help of perturbation expansions. Here epsilon is the perturbation constant, j is the suffix which we use for generalization. Now we all, all know after all these amazing slides given by the previous um, presenters, that plasma is made up of num a lot of components. It is made up of ions, there are uh, electrons, ions, positrons, even dust, and lots more. So writing all the equations with, the, uh, with this time, number of particles, number of uh, components would be lengthy. And what we do is uh, write a simple matrix form of this perturbation equation and with the help of k equal to k1 plus ik2, where k1 is the real part of the wave number and k2 is the imaginary part, we get the linear dispersion relation omega real versus k1, omega real and omega imaginary for the real and the imaginary plots. Next, we go for the linear dispersion characteristics plots of omega real versus k1 for and omega imaginary versus k2 for different parameters h, u0 and eta. Now, the u0 plot is has no uh, such effect, but uh, the h plot in for k less than for a lower value of k, we see that there is some variation both in omega real and omega imaginary. But for higher values of k, we basically find a linear structure. But eta uh, plot variation is very important. For eta less than h and eta greater than h, linear and nonlinear plots are a scene. 
in case of omega real. But for eta less than h and eta greater than h, nonlinear and linear plots are observed. So we can say that uh, these two graphs are basically inverse to each other. Again, if you notice, eta equal to h, the plot behaves completely linearly. Another interesting thing is in the imaginary case, the plots intersect at a point giving omega imaginary for uh, k2 equal to 0 0.7, a particular value of omega imaginary for k2 equal to 0 0.7. Next, we extended our work to the KDVB equation. But before going into it, let's see a video on solar flares. I wish it work. OK, so it's working. In July 19, 2012, a medium sized flare occurred on the sun. Solar flares send out shock waves that reverberate through the solar system. As you can see in this video taken from NASA. Let's dig into it. These amazing waves are seen. These are basically the shock waves. And what we did is the KDVB equation, we actually studied this shock waves. And from here, my friend Devi Prashad Dotto is going to take. Over to you, Devi Prashad. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, so thank you, Mrithika. Uh, so now uh, we are going to discuss about the shock waves in electroacoustic wave case in plasma. So as previously mentioned, uh, shock waves are uh, in, in, in uh, classical dynamics or in natural features, the shock waves uh, in plasma differ from those in normal gas in a different number of aspects. In, in normal case, we, when we deal with shock waves or supersonic waves, uh, when an object travels with uh, speeds greater than the speed of sound, we get the shock waves or supersonic kind of structures, waves. And, but in the plasma, we uh, have some different problems because uh, the difference arises because of the ability of plasma to conduct electricity as well as to interact with magnetic fields. Uh, where in uh, normal shock wave case, uh, there are only air molecules which are uh, not conducting or uh, not interacting with magnetic fields. So inclusion of magnetic fields and uh, electric current, uh, there arises a lot of uh, complexity in the problem. So certain types of shock waves which have no analogy in classical gas dynamics can also exist in plasma. So to study this kind of uh, uh, shock waves, and their properties analytically, we need the help of KDV or KDV Burgess equation. And so we have done here. Again, here we want to study the variables in very microscopic scale. And thus we want to do the stretching of variables, which we have shown here, which is just uh, nothing but just replacing the ordinary variables with another set of variables. So again, here we want, uh, again, uh, after substituting, eliminating, and organizing the normalized equation shown uh, in the above slides, and using the normal perturbation expansion shown here, uh, we uh, did some uh, different orders. We, we considered some different orders of epsilon and uh, neglecting and replacing some of the field variables, which we have shown here. We finally got the KDVB equation. Uh, so KDVB equation in the left hand side, we have some constants that is that are A, B and C. So A, B, A is the nonlinear constant coefficient, B is the dispersive coefficient, C is the viscosity coefficient. And after using the transformation and applying the boundary conditions, which are shown above, uh, the above uh, solution, the above equation have a solution. We got the solution, which is shown here. Uh, there are two terms. Uh, one is sec hyperbolic term and one is uh, tan hyperbolic term. So the six square hyperbolic term is represents the solitary structure and the tan hyperbolic term represents the shock component of the solution. So uh, coming to the next slide, coming to the graphs, we have plotted the graphs in two dimensions uh, with respect to psi versus xi. 
uh, with respect to the variations of uh, different parameters, uh, which are the uh, quantum diffraction parameter age, uh, u zero and eta. Uh, so we are we are seen from we are seeing from the plots that a, um, a certain type of shock or a peak is achieved at xi equal to zero for every gap, and the peak doesn't get affected for the variation of eta. That is the viscosity term, but uh, also gets uh, flattened by the increasing of u zero or the decreasing of h. That is the quantum uh, diffraction parameters. So uh, these are these these parameters uh, do affect the peaks or the shock uh, profiles of that kind of waves. And in the next slide, we also plotted the same uh, in three dimensions, and we also got uh, some some plots and the shock components uh, here. And that's it. And we also it can extend our work in applications of KDV budgets. And the applications can be synodal waves, which are surface waves, uh, rock waves, Rossby waves, and acoustic waves in crystal lattice, and so on. And in the next slide, we have shown the references uh, we have used. And thank you. Well, uh, thank you once again, Devi Prashad. So, as for the um, questions, so I find only two questions. The first one is from uh, someone, anyway. So, they just asked that uh, this kind of uh, solitary waves, what you have just said, uh, how can we? That is the normal people out here. We can just observe in uh, our day-to-day -day life because rarely we come in terms uh, with the solitary waves. Basically, is there any evidence that we find it or recent? Because you have done with shock profiles as well. So, is there any shocks reported so far? Uh, basically, solitary waves were first invented. In an, uh, I don't remember the place, but it was invented uh, in a canal. Okay, and uh, the wave starts and it doesn't end. So the person who was watching it, he basically uh, got an uh, got into an uh, horse, a long back. It was uh, the event was uh, a few years or uh, many uh, years back. Yeah, so the, basically, the he was. Question, uh, I think is that uh, what you are saying about the uh, how the solitary waves were observed so yes. uh, we are just saying that uh, shocks or solitary waves in space plasma uh, is it uh, i think i just checked in some of the old papers that in 2018 sometimes in april there was a huge shock wave been reported and yes, I, I, will, I even showed that right in yes, 2000 yes, yes. yes, uh, yes. i think the video so, i can show it the I think in, in the recent years, uh, uh, it's not been reported like that, isn't it? Yes, yes. Even, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we went to that also. In 2014, yeah. even we saw, saw that in the sun. Basically, it is okay. very much... These are quite important. So, I congratulate all the speakers today. Thank you, Matika, Devi okay. Prashash, Shumon, and uh, obviously, Siju, that... Uh, Today's session is almost towards the end, and we congratulate you all for presenting such a wonderful talk this evening. It's quite enriching. And uh, as for those who have uh, registered, and also we will send the next video slide over uh, next uh, YouTube video link to your mails for tomorrow. And tomorrow, stock will be on uh, tomorrow's talk will be the guest lecture would be by Dr. Suraj Kumar Sina from the Pondicherry University and is the plasma metal on Eastern Plasma Metal Junction, the PM Junction from eight to nine. But before that, we'll have some of our uh, students, some of our students and scholars who will present in their work. So, as of today, good night, everyone, all the presenters. So, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right now. And uh, 
be there tomorrow same place same time thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you